Well, hi again, everybody. Great to see you. Thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act Two. And this is where Art and I get to uh, talk about the solve the problems of the world on our weekly blog and kind of update you on life in general, all the things you need to know about getting older. And speaking of getting older, here's Art Kirsch. Hi there. And yes, uh, I love getting older. Uh, as John and some of you know, I have a 25 year rolling plan. So nice. I've already got, uh, got people working on my 100th birthday, which is in that 25 year window. Uh, uh, John and I continue to think about new things to do, and we've got a couple of new projects coming out. Uh, but I, I, I want to start off by, uh, I think it was one or two weeks ago, uh, we did another little blurb on skin cancer. Uh, and uh, uh, very well, certainly to me, uh, uh, five years ago, come this August, I had a, um, I, and I, because I'm, I'm light skinned and I'm blue eyed, and I used to be brown as a berry. I made, uh, who's the guy, the actor Hamilton, Elizabeth Taylor's friend, uh, it was a do uh, always super dark brown. Uh, uh, well, during the summers, we belonged to Beach Club. Uh, and I grew up on the East Coast and I was in the Atlantic Ocean all the time. And I, I'd be brown as a berry. Well, I pay for it now. Uh, not everybody who does that, like not all smokers get cancer, skin cancer, uh, or lung cancer. But uh, I have developed, uh, for the last 15, 20 years, I've been going to dermatologists on a very regular basis. And uh, they're constantly burning stuff off with nitrogen and, and, uh, Five years, five and a half, six years ago, they found a uh, melanoma uh, that was uh, growing on my scalp. And because I go every six months, they noticed it quickly, got me to a surgeon. Uh, I had a surgery. It had not spread to the any of the, the uh, glands or anything like that. And as a matter of fact, in uh, about two months from now, I go for my fifth uh, uh, year of cancer-free um, I presume it will be uh, examinations uh, for that. But every so often, uh, in addition to them just noticing stuff that, well, it could grow into something, so they, they zap it with nitrogen, um, they find something, I don't know whether, what it's really called, but I think it's like a basal cell, something or other, which is cancerous. And so what they do is they take a little sample, they send it off to a lab, and if it comes back that it's free and clear, thank you very much. Uh, if it comes back and there's they detect cancer, they have you come back again, uh, and they do it with a they, they take another slice, if you will, of skin, and give it to a lab technician. And within a half hour, they say whether or not they have now cut out all of the rest of the cancer. And ninety, I think I've only had once where they had to go in twice. Uh, so, yeah, so, but but right. that it's that it's free. So that's what that what is. You're, what you're saying is this isn't from picking your nose. No, because, <laughs> because I'm actually much better at that than, than yeah. that. I have much better. I still have good aim, but uh, so uh, I think I wound up with three stitches or something, and uh, uh, and it's scabbed. And this is now I think since Friday, and most of the scab is gone. And on Thursday. Um, uh, I go and I have the stitches removed, and yeah. that's pretty much what it is. So you can keep on top. Of, that's all I'm trying to say. So that's that's what this well, is. And, and you see a lot of you see a lot of uh, uh, people that have a small band aid on their their forehead or their nose or their yeah. ear. That's what that's probably that's what probably it what, is, what it, yeah. probably what it is. Hey, you've had those, John, right? You've had sure. Yeah. I've had. I'm going to have my uh, skin doctor look at wherever this is. I've got a little band aid up there. Yeah. Um, but anyway, good update, Art. Because it's very real thing, and we uh, we want to keep a, keep our audience apprised of uh, what they need to do to take care of themselves and enjoy the second half of their life. Right. Um, speaking of the second half of your life, I was out in the garden this weekend and uh, noticed that uh, the kids are all busy. You mm. know, the, the if uh, grandkids you're working, the grandkids we're, the we're technically not right. Um, you've got your vacation planned. And let's see, my grandson, one of my grandsons is up in Colorado working at a dude ranch for the summer. Thank right. you very much. And this is Thank actually you. his second or third year, right? He's he's really into that. Yeah, 
Yeah, he is. And uh, I've got a granddaughter who's working at a movie theater mm -hmm. for the summer, um, delivering food, if you will, at a movie theater. When did that happen? I don't know. Drive-ins. But... Drive-ins. <laughs> yeah. No, but you're talking about the you're talking about the high-end uh, theaters. Oh yeah, that, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So my point though is that if you're over sixty and you're not working, or you're quote retired or whatever you want to call it, like us. Um, vacation, the summertime doesn't necessarily represent vacation. For instance, I know folks who like to uh, tour or uh, they cruise in the winter. Right. They take the winter cruise. They don't care. It, summer is not relevant to them. Summer, winter, it's whenever they can get yeah, a good they, cruise they can, to go where they want to go. Well, we have a, a, a lot of people that we know that go uh, to Europe off season because, yes. you know, the, they, uh, 12 months of the year are sort of open to them to uh, arrange things. Look, a lot of people take uh, senior classes, they get involved in activities. So in yeah. fact, they may not be working at a income producing uh, job, but they do have commitments. But yeah. generally speaking, uh, we're much more flexible in being able to uh, head out in uh, non-peak times, probably get a better rate. Um, but uh, once you get older, like we have uh, uh, one of our uh, grandchildren is over 30. She's been working full time, but she still but she takes vacations, but she they take them in the times that we used to take them, which was, you know, in the summertime or when you've sure. accumulated time. We've got a grandson who just graduated from college uh, who's an Eagle Scout. And uh, before he starts his master's program, he went to Switzerland where he's uh, like the uh, chief medical guy for the camp for two weeks, representing the United States uh, as scouting. So, uh, and we have uh, the, the little ones are in, in baseball camp and gymnastics camp and all the things like that, but they have to do it during their time off from school. Whereas the rest of us, oh, like the rest of us can go oh, whenever- Oh, sure folks. <laughs> well, I don't know how mature we are. Uh, so the real question yeah. for you are, over 50 audience is what is what does vacation mean to you? What does summertime mean? Is that yeah. when do you take vacation? And I guess what is a vacation at this point? If you're not working, if you're retired, maybe the word vacation doesn't have any meaning. Let you us know. know. Uh, you know Let what I'm going to call this uh, this segment, this episode, uh, a great. In fact, I want to go find it in the movies. I always enjoy the movie Endless Summer. Oh, about the lifeguard, go. the, the good, year good round. Call. Yeah. <laughs> For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.